The number one question this week in the comments of our videos on the Ocean Gate Titan sub implosion is why did the topside support vessel Polar Prince wait so long to notify the Coast Guard to inform them they lost contact with the Titan submarine? So let's tackle this question first. Why did Ocean Gate wait too long before calling the US Coast Guard? So the reason here is simple, and I think this answer is going to be the same as the root cause for this entire Ocean Gate Titan submarine implosion. We're also going to try to answer many of the really tough questions you have on the Titan implosion. And that is a, a phenomenon that I call normalization of deviance. Now, what this means is this is a, sort of a, a social term that we apply in the engineering world. And what this means is that you're acting in a manner that deviates from the way you're supposed to do something, whether it be uh, you're covered by regulations or laws or a recipe or maybe an ANSI spec or something like that. Or if you're building a, a building, you have specs from the ACI that you're supposed to adhere to. When I do remodeling of bathrooms and stuff like that. The Tile Council of North America right here has this handbook here for doing tile installation. And it's got it for many different possible substrates and, and wall types and stuff like that. And I look at this and I make sure that what I'm, the stack up that I'm doing when I'm building a, a new shower surround, that it conforms to the industry standards. Otherwise, you're going to get leaks. If you know anybody that had a leak after a remodeling, that's because they didn't know what they were doing and it was normalization of deviance. They deviated from the norms. Some famous classic examples of this normalization of deviance. Of course, the, I think the big one that comes to mind is Titanic because there was so much arrogance involved in there. But this ship can't sink that they were so sure that these lifeboats that they had would be enough for everybody. And they thought that the ship just couldn't possibly sink too. Another good example of the normalization of deviance would be the 1986 NASA space shuttle disaster of the Challenger when it blew up. So um, engineers at Morton Thiokol supposedly had been sending out warnings to everybody not to let the shuttle blast off in the cold weather because they thought the O-rings were gonna shrink too much, uh, something along those lines but their warnings were unheeded. And so sometimes normalization of deviance ties in with what we call groupthink, or another one that I always called in the corporate world, um, herd mentality. I've been in meetings before where I was trying to convince the managers, don't do this. The circuit is backwards, it's gonna fail. And they overruled me, all of them. And it was like a herd mentality. And when the circuit came back, sure enough, it didn't work. And then they blamed me. Why didn't you try harder to, to change our minds? You know, That's the type of thing I'm talking about. Another classic example is the fire door or propped open to the stairwell, you know. Well, we've always had done it this way. It's been like this for three years. We've never had a problem. Well, guess what? You don't have a problem until you have a problem, folks. And don't forget the Champlain Towers condo collapse in Miami. You've seen my videos. And then the one from a couple of months ago here in Davenport, Iowa. So that's what normalization of deviance is. How does that apply here? You got to understand all of these employees on this boat look up to Stockton Rush. And they've already had, what, at least a dozen trips down to the Titanic where there was no problems. You see that? We haven't had a problem up until now. The implosion of the sub was probably not even on their minds. And it probably wasn't even on our minds until the Navy came out and said, we heard an implosion sound. So to me, I was thinking, oh, well, they're drifting somewhere for three days and uh, they're trying to find them. Maybe they ran into trouble. Other people in the submarine community, like James Cameron, he's a lot more knowledgeable. He already knew. But the rest of us that didn't have all of that knowledge and stuff, we didn't know. If we look at the Reuters timeline here, they said 9.45 a.m. Eastern time is when they lost communications with the sub. And the sub was overdue, I guess, by 3 p.m. And it wasn't until 5.40 p.m. that they called the Coast Guard. So if the Polar Prince lost contact with the Titan sub at 9.45 a.m. and they never got it back, why didn't they call the Coast Guard then? And even when 3 p.m. deadline came and went, why did they wait almost two and a half hours before they finally got around to calling the Coast Guard in? Again, the way this normalization of deviance had been serving them is that it was normal for them to lose communications with the sub. And every time they figured, hey, maybe they'll, they'll come back. In fact, there was a prior mission sometime before where the sub got stuck down at the bottom there for 24 hours and they had to wait for the emergency materials there to dissolve in the salt water to release the weights. And Stockton Rush just told everybody inside the submarine, just sleep it off. Let's just go to sleep. So these are the kind of strange things that can develop from a situation like this and so it appears the crew just didn't want to come to terms with it they didn't want to admit it they had analysis paralysis and couldn't even fathom the fact 
that that submarine had imploded. Okay, now how about this for an eerie coincidence, folks? Back in 1898, this book comes out called The Wreck of the Titan. And according to this story here, the sinking of it is uh, very similar to the way the Titanic sank, and yet it was called Titan too. So you, we're starting to see a lot of these kind of interesting coincidences. And then why OceanGate CEO Stockton Rush didn't listen to all of the advice of his close friends and even advisors. I think there's a couple of other things that come into play here. One of them is arrogance, and another one might be narcissism. So if we look here at Duke Health, the nine signs of narcissistic personality disorder, symptoms of, of the disorder, they got, this is their acronym here, special me, they call it. But here's a sense of importance, preoccupation with power or success, entitled, can only be around people who are important or special. Not sure about this one, a little bit of arrogance. Yeah, I'd say he lacked uh, empathy and certainly passed off that he liked to be admired. So he seems to have some of these symptoms here. So take a look at this email exchange between Rob McCallum and Stockton Rush back in 2018. So Rob is trying to warn him, you are wanting to use a prototype unclassed technology in a very hostile place. As much as I appreciate entrepreneurship and innovation, you are potentially putting an entire industry at risk. And Stockton Rush comes back here and you can, here's, here's the crux of it right here. This is his personality. I have grown tired of industry players who try to use a safety argument to stop innovation and new entrants from entering their small existing market. Since Guillermo and I started OceanGate, we have heard the baseless cries of you are going to kill someone way too often. I take this as a serious personal insult. And so this is what happens with somebody who is narcissist. They will not accept any type of criticism at all. And then Rob McCallum replies back with, I think you are potentially placing yourself and your clients in a dangerous dynamic. Ironically, in your race to Titanic, you are mirroring that famous catch cry. She is unsinkable. Having dived the Titanic and having stood in a coroner's court as a technical expert, it would be remiss of me to not bring this to your attention. Uh, as, as all expeditions start exactly on time, I uh, wanted to uh, welcome everyone. We had, I think, over 400 people sign up. We've got, uh, looks like, 165 already on. So in short, Stockton Rush wants to be this trailblazer, in, uh, like a swashbuckling trailblazer with safety be damned. And, and I think he's just tricked himself into thinking he was being safe when he really wasn't. Stockton Rush considers all of the advice given to him by all of these people around him as attacks against him rather than constructing constructive criticism. And these are sad parallels to the Titanic. Actually, you know, they're both similar in name and both captains ignored the safety warnings. Captain Edward Smith ignored the reports of icebergs in their path. And Stockton Rush says that he wanted to be remembered as a guy who broke the rules. And he also was quoted a few years ago saying, which I think he said it to David Polk, if you're afraid of dying, don't get out of bed. Now, you may have already seen this, but I'll show it to you in case you missed it. You are looking at a Subway franchise store in Rincon, Georgia, who put up this tasteless sign that says, Our subs don't implode. Now, keep in mind, this was not a Subway-sponsored ad. In fact, the Subway headquarters actually had to have a nice little chat with this store about what you're supposed to do and not do. In fact, Subway says, we've been in contact with the franchise about this matter and made it clear that this kind of comment has no place in our business. And as far as the Subway restaurant is concerned, well, you know, in a disaster like this, there's always going to be somebody in the crowd that does something distasteful like that. You know, that would be like me if I owned a car dealership and a tsunami disaster happens and I get on the radio and go, come on down to Crazy Jeff's Auto Mall. It's a tsunami of savings. You know, there's always going to be stupidity like that going on. And of course, this happened with the Champlain Towers condo collapse that I covered for you folks back in June of 2021. A lot of people don't know this, but there were some scammers that actually used the identities of some of the dead victims of the condo collapse to take out credit in their names. How sick is that? Another question we get a lot here is why didn't they use GPS there on the Titan sub? Well, GPS is a very weak signal that comes from the satellites and it can't go down into the ocean depths. It just doesn't work down there. Nothing works down there. They have to use text messaging through these hydrophones. Now, in the previous video I uploaded last week concerning that transcript between the sub and the topside vessel, the Polar Prince, and we were trying to determine if that was real or fake, some of you responded back with questions saying, no, no, no. I think that's fake because they wouldn't talk in complete sentence like that in the messages they go and other people have posted a picture online supposed to be from a previous launch of the Titan where somebody in there got a picture of like the codes and what 
what single word or three letter acronyms or whatever they use to talk. But yet look at this video here that I have from the BBC that clearly shows the screen down on the Titan. And you can see on there, they are talking in full words on there. So Stockton Rush wanted to be remembered for breaking the rules, but he's also going to be remembered for an important lesson that he taught all of us. And so kudos to him for that. And because now every single person on earth knows not to make a submersible vessel out of carbon fiber. Advanced Composites put up a great video here on YouTube showing us the proper way to do winding for our carbon fiber technology. So here they're showing you the good filament winding. See here how they're doing the, the woven there instead of the normal hoop winding. So this type here where they go back and forth at an angle, I think creates a much more stable environment in your carbon fiber. I think it really limits the amount that it could try to delaminate. Now here TCR is showing us how to wind a helical layer. It's the same thing. The thing is to try to just avoid going all the way around like a hose. You're going at an angle and you're changing angle when you get to the other side. Okay, now compare this to the original video here that OceanGate gave us for the Titan sub during the manufacture. This is the actual compression chamber being manufactured out of carbon fiber. And as you can see here, they're doing it with the hoop woven method, which is just ridiculous because you're not changing the layers. Each layer could easily delaminate, whereas if you had woven over it at an angle, it probably wouldn't. So make sure you subscribe to this channel below if you don't want to miss any more of these videos because we have a few more coming. We have many more of your questions to answer. So keep those questions coming. Well, thank you so much, folks, for joining us, and we'll see you on the next one.